Thomas, how are you doing? I've got I've got no music on my end. No no intro. <laughs> no, what? I'm and jamming just, here. And I just I can hear it now. You're on your MacBook mic, not your external. Can you mic. hear me now? I can hear you fine. But now I can't hear you. Oh no. I swear we just did sound check. We did. So you're on a you're on a different mic. Still no music? No music. Can you and hear my voice? Yep. But you're on a different mic. What did I do there? <sighs> Take two. Okay. Um, let's see. Audio. Oh, yeah. How about this? Music. I was I was dancing. I was literally I was doing the sprinkler during the break. I was like, I saw you backstage. <laughs> It was jamming. Can you hear me now? Great. I can hear you. It's uh, uh, what what good is sound check if I don't catch big mistakes like that? <laughs> like I can hear you. I'm good. Let's go. Let's go. Let's roll with it. <laughs> and then we went. But then it was then coming we through your uh, computer microphone, not your actual microphone, when we went live. But that's uh, I think. I think thing. from now on we probably ought to test the actual sound uh, during sound check instead of just like you know, chat about the up. day, yeah. talk about work, <laughs> our pets, all the other things we do during sound check. Maybe it's actually a bit more of a functional event instead of just something you have to check off. Potato, potato. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, we are professionals. That that yeah. is like the best phrase that LawTube has ever come up with. Other than the poop is out of the horse, I like that one from Emily Baker. That's part of, probably my favorite. She says it a little. She's witty. Oh, yeah, well, she of says course. horse differently. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> just just horse, nothing else. She's super, she, of course she's brilliant, and uh, but she yeah she has a twist on things that it's fun. She's entertaining. Yeah, she's uh, uh, she's great. Adam, Adam says it's okay. We're used to bad audio today. It's it's been bad, but oh my goodness, I'm hooked on this trial. I, you know, it, I, Arizona is miles away now. It's like it's so far away. From, I mean, it is <laughs> literally, but uh, <laughs> I, it's just, I'm hooked. No, I'm with you. So it, it's funny how, um, well, you know how it is in the life of YouTube in the realm. They talk about headlines and thumbnails, right? That capture an audience. So I like you. I've just been with you watching the Arizona trial and um, I've heard about the, you know, Apple River stabbings and, and what have you, but the way I've heard about it or seen it presented, my mind went a completely different way. I, I pictured um, something for those of you that watch um, that chapter, that the YouTube channel that does these gruesome murder uh, and, and all this investigation goes in like a serial killer. So my mind went there, some uh, nighttime serial killer down by the river. That's the, cause I didn't, I knew nothing about the case at all, period. Um, and so that's what I the, just put just it from in the that stabby bucket. stabby name. Yeah. And so that's where I put that trial in that bucket. And then when you called an audible and, and pulled it up and watched, there was, it was nothing like I preconceived it to be. And I'm with you. I got hooked immediately of watching to see what's going on and all the testimony from the witnesses and all the discussion and all the components of it. It's uh, it's definitely, a, it's a mind grabbing trial that that's happening. It's uh, it's wild, but um, Melissa, Dennis, it's her birthday today, by the way. Happy oh. birthday, Melissa. <laughs> Dennis <laughs> no longer does free pancakes. I think they stopped this because I have the, the notoriety I gave them. Is that is that a fair cancel? It, it's an assumption. <laughs> They're like, look, we can't. It was fine before, but until a recovery addict started telling everybody about it. And now we just, it's, it's the bottom line's been affected. And uh, the free pancakes. Uh, it's really just the yeah like the offer looks no the offer looks great on paper but when people actually take advantage we can't afford this we gotta stop we can't do it to, anymore i need to find oh. another national chain that gives out free pancakes does ihop give out free pancakes they've got birthday? to well we've got if, the, if uh, they don't they should i mean there's an opportunity here <laughs> to, to lose money with <laughs> there you recovery go. <laughs> uh looking for a sponsor willing to give away free pancakes and maybe buy me Deer Park water because I cannot do four liters of Mountain Dew again in a day. I, I'm wired. I'm not going to sleep tonight. Three-hour podcast. Uh, IHOP, 
Uh, loyalty members will also get two times the pan coins on any additional menu items purchased. Members can also get free pancakes on their birthday. I hope. Okay, so but you have to be a member. There's, a, there's a big asterisk. There's a big old asterisk right there that uh, I don't know what, what being a member entails. I don't either. That's what they all do anymore, right? Like uh, today. So today is uh, National Burrito Day. So happy National Burrito Day. There and there's an article out there about how you can take advantage of all of the free burritos. Um, but it's customers must use the online app through our loyalty program to order X, Y, Z to get, to get, to get. So you are, you, you got to be a part of it to get it. You can't just go in and say, Hey, you're doing half off burritos national. Nope. Well, you got to hmm. leave the building, get on the app, order it out there in your car and then come in and get it. It's a hook, line I, and I know, sinker. I know what they're for. doing here. They, the, the whole idea is you want to own your customers, right? And this is the thing on YouTube too, because as a, as a content creator, YouTube owns your, your following. You don't, right. I, I don't have everyone's information. So say like if, if tomorrow YouTube's, you know, what, you know, this really isn't working for us recovery addict. You, you should probably find another, you know, it's not you, it's me. I don't know how they would say it, but if they, if they decide to cut ties immediately uh, in that big divorce, they keep all the customers, they keep all the viewers. Right. So corporations are looking for ways to, to sort of have access to that. Okay. It's, it's one thing to send out just like coupons in the newspaper and people show up with a coupon, but it's another thing if you have their email address or their phone number or it's straight direct message app <laughs> messaging to their, to their phone to be like, Hey, don't exactly. you want a burrito this morning? <laughs> you know? Exactly. Uh, it makes sense, but it's frustrating because uh, because then you have to manage like a million different memberships and I'm, i always give out fake numbers <laughs> i'm not sure if you guys do this i give out fake numbers when i go to grocery stores and sign up for their loyalty program and Same. it's like i i literally i'll roll the dice and i'll i've even gone so far as to say i can't remember my numbers all right if i use yours and it's not a pickup line i'm just I'm saying look i don't need want the loyalty points but i want the discount okay you can keep my loyalty points i want the discount but uh Am I, am, I the, am I the weirdo on that one? <laughs> no, no, it's on point. I get it. It's uh, And it's what they do. I, I sent out something for life insurance, I don't know, a million years ago, and I get 20 texts a day of, hey, Bill, hey, Ashley, hey, Sarah, this is Mike with your newest th And I'm like, you, what? Remember it's when you filled out that form? <laughs> yes. And I'm like, uh, you signed up for some vacation package, you know, like, yeah, I may have. <laughs> hi, hi, Dwayne. <laughs> but it's, uh, I promise I never use the name Dwayne on any of these. That is a, that is a legitimate. I bought his phone number without knowing it was his 100%. So. Dwayne got he got out of Dodge real quick and he's lucky. The real Dwayne, <laughs> he's like, I'm so glad I haven't had any calls for years. <laughs> <laughs> Me all the time now, it just stopped. I don't know what it was. You know what? Uh, speaking of something, we have to remember. Uh, it's it's a new month. It's April. I know where you're going. Membership. We have we have a couple hundred people watching. I, I say about two hundred and thirty six, two hundred thirty five, two hundred thirty four. Before everyone leaves, two thirty four, one ninety eight, <laughs> one ninety two. We're we're gonna give away a few memberships, and I'm all ready. To, last time I had trouble figuring it out, so I'm gonna give away. I have to give them away in batches of five. So if everybody has first, make sure your gift setting is on. So before before I do this, I want to make sure everyone who wants to be eligible is eligible. So ex exclamation point gifts in chat. Thank you, Thomas, for that. There's a link. When it opens up that page, you need to make sure that the slider, if you're looking at your screen, is moved to the right. So the button's moved to the right. It should look a little bit blue, right? <laughs> it's gray yes. when it's off. It's blue when it's on. Mm -hmm. You want it to be blue. <laughs> crazy cat queen has already been gifting memberships <laughs> crazy <laughs> um this and, and uh what uh, coffee true crime oh my goodness uh coffee and crime uh gifted 10 and crazy cat queen gifted five as well at the same time so we're going to give out another 10 as we're just going to wait for just a moment and and then we will go ahead and do that i think oh. is everyone ready we are. Wendy says my membership expires tomorrow. <laughs> so, so, oh no! Wendy. And we used to do the podcast on Fridays. <laughs> oh Wendy. no! Wendy. You would you would be like a hundred percent chance of winning, basically. Yeah. But right now, YouTube looks at you and says you're not eligible. <laughs> and I don't make the rules. I just have to play with them, play by them. And I do apologize. Uh, <laughs> 
Oh man. Well, we'll see if maybe you'll get hit with a different gifting uh, later on. So I'm um, here. We go. Five, four, three, two, one. Here's the first five. And your gift has been announced. Live chat. Oh, there it goes. It happened. It was, it was real. So kind Let's of see. Who, who did we get? We got uh, <laughs> Weebug, Honey2800, Kathy Siska, and Denise Dominguez. And now I'm just going to try to do the next five, if it will let and me. And SUE2 came in with the fifth one. Oh, I probably should name all five. Nah. It's more efficient. Another it's five team, going out right now. Team game. <laughs> He's music man is jumping up and down trying to get one. <laughs> me, 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 Look, me, me. We got Melissa P on her birthday, at least. Oh, wait. No, that was she's already a member. She was just in yeah. the middle of SOS. <laughs> AVX and Phoenix. Uh Susan Green uh Grenovich. Um SOS. Who else? Don. It scrolled. Don and uh Karen Hicks. Is that five? No whammies has came. Candace hands off. No whammies. Unfortunately, well, no fine. winners either for you, Candace. Apologize. I Ten tried. gifts out the door. That's so awesome. That's so cool that YouTube does that. And it's uh, I think it's really neat that you choose to do it on the uh, podcast. I think it's really just, cool. I think that's the that's the one format where I can reward the people who are most like deserving. Because really, if you're still here today after everything that <laughs> happened, you deserve the membership, right? Oh my goodness, we had we had a lot going on today. But Five more from Bug Dugger. Bug Dugger, incredibly generous gifter. You guys are amazing. That's incredible. It came in uh, with Candace Hoff, Rebecca Designs. E, I can't read it so far. E point Candace, Dexter, you just got one right there. Princess Laz and Azen. That's so cool. Bug Dugger, That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, now, once again, chat is going to just fly because there's no slow mode for anybody. <laughs> yeah, slow mode count, yeah. <laughs> Couple people still still have not uh, caught the uh, the gift yet. We we're not sure why, but um, speaking of that, oh my goodness, uh, fun week, right? Yeah, busy week. Uh, well, we've had big weather, weather week, weather, 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 weather all over the place, which um, is a fun week for me. Uh, loved it. So usually on the podcast this time, of year, well, not this time of year, but currently uh, I give a police academy update. Mm -hmm. um, it actually worked out fairly well. Well, to a degree. So I've got a, a, a sick doggo, but we also had severe weather coming in the area. And I was kind of on the fence of attending or not because it was going to be 30 minutes of, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, touring juvenile hall. And then an hour and a half of driving police cars through an obstacle course in the uh, parking lot at the arena. So I was so torn of, oh, man, I got, you know, my pup is sick, but we got severe weather kind of in the area. It's going to be hit or miss. You know, it could hit my house, uh, but not hit five miles over where we're driving type situation. That's how severe weather works. So uh, I opted not to go. Um, spoke to an individual who runs the academy today um, because he has other ties to the podcast mm -hmm. going on and uh so they couldn't drive the the, the yeah surprise. the pavement was too wet um so they didn't drive uh so i well, missed you missed juvenile hall i missed juvenile hall and juvenile i was detention. just in the state prison you know a couple weeks ago touring and so that, and we, we know that that wasn't high on your list of that was enjoyable moments no it wasn't and and honestly juvenile hall um I've, I've been to one before, but I realistically, I didn't want to see it either, especially if at any way in point in time we were going to be like, so the kids stay right here. You know, I wouldn't have joined that either. So, um, so it actually worked out. I hate that I missed one because I just wanted to go to all of them. Just say I did, but uh, just it didn't work out. But it, it works out um, since they didn't get to drive. So um, you didn't miss the one thing you really wanted to do. Are they going to yeah. reschedule that? Are they going like, to uh, do a makeup day? No, because they have a time crunch. But what they do is, and it's really cool, if you happen to miss a day, you can then on the next academy uh, class, you can call in and say, oh, uh, hey, Brian, I missed the prison tour on my academy. Here's my name. Can I join your class for this one? And they'll let you come and sit in for that one class you missed. So, yeah, right. so if the weather's good for the next one and they get to drive, I can say, hey, I didn't go to that one. And can I come? So it maybe, all kind of works can, out. You can do that. You can like convince them that you didn't get to go shoot at the SWAT 
the SWAT thing. Even <laughs> though I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really want to go again. Can I just get a second? You can let somebody else drive for me if I can go shoot. <laughs> if I, if I can go shoot. Time. So uh, well, next week's cool it is gang unit and negotiations. So that'll be a fun one. Um, really excited about that. And then um, not to give too much out, but we're you're someone is involved is going to come on the show. Yes. Yes. He's, he, he confirmed gang today. Member, right? Gang member, active I warrants. I don't, I don't, and we're going to have him rested right here on the show gang units next monday so i'll find out if that's part of it or not but uh but yeah we've we've been uh we've been asking and and seeing what he'll do and i spoke to him on the phone today not next week but the week after he will uh he has penciled us in to come join the show and he's watched our podcast he said and he uh, still well, said yes well it was after i invited him and i said hey here's a link come check us out and uh he actually said he liked it so awesome. and I'm, he still I'm wants looking to forward to it. so looking he's a great guy it. people love him he can talk way more than i can um he, he'll steal the show we'll get booted off the island and he'll take over it's gonna be we great. can rename it after him and just be like hand over the passwords <laughs> and call it good <laughs> so that's, that's right. awesome I'm, I'm super excited for that i've got a i've got a friend here that's in the gang unit um in greenville which i, didn't, I mean okay. greenville north carolina i didn't know he had gangs but apparently we do they're um, everywhere because <laughs> they're yeah they're everywhere so uh i, I might have to I, th I think he's undercover so i don't think i'd be able to get bring him on well, he could do the. Well, so when I was uh, in the street, I was. I, I, I could mask his voice. I could. I mean, I could just put yeah. it through the filter that I'm putting on the Apple River trial to make it sound bad. I could use that. <laughs> <laughs> Al Natural. <laughs> I'm trying to show all the gifted memberships. Uh, oh my goodness! Red Pen, uh, Coffee and Crime, Crazy Cat Queen, uh, Bug Dugger. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Virginia Little. Crazy Cat Queen again, uh, um, loads, uh, Candace Hoff, you guys are amazing. You are absolutely amazing. Thank you very much. Do we qualify as a gang, says Greeners? We have to have, we have to have like a gang sign or at least, you know, something we can do. Um, I don't know how to make RA out of my fingers. I don't know how that would it's, work. It's like it hurts. I mean, you can do it once, but then you can't. <laughs> yeah. Like a, I can, Careful. I can do like, <laughs> Careful with that. <laughs> okay. you could, I, we could carve our A into our trees. I can do like a little <laughs> little munchkin guy that's like. Mar, 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 mar. Here, here, here's. This is a skill. A sh that was a shadow yeah. puppet. That was not Hang a gang on. sign. Yeah. Watch, watch, watch. Well, it, this could be like a gang sign. Look, because it's easy. You take your fat, stubby fingers like mine. And you take them and bend them like this. And then it goes. <laughs> it doesn't even look like anything on camera. It's really cool on my end. It that looks like a dinosaur. Ferocious gang sign I have ever seen. <laughs> that would, if I was walking down in the hood and someone threw that sign at me, hey man, what's up? <laughs> I'd be like, do you need help, sir? <laughs> oh my goodness, Greeners! <laughs> you see Greeners comment here. Oh um, man, I can't even find my mouse anymore. Oh, I'm I on just, the wrong screen. I just know all the like the shadow puppets, like the barking dog you can do with the shadow. Uh, there was a bunny. I forget how to do that, but we went we from like a talent night where we just go back and forth. And, and <laughs> we're going to have like Pictionary. <laughs> it's like Pictionary, but we do shadow puppets. And we hire people to actually bring in talent. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just us. <laughs> this is what you get. Oh. Hope you're on your A game because I got, <laughs> I get all the moves. Um, a greener said something i lost it said something about tell me you've never been in a gang without telling me you've never been in a gang <laughs> <laughs> it was the whole ram, ram, ram yeah, thing that I think. was it it was, but, uh, it was somewhere up there yes six nailed it the uh yes not talent, no talent. talent show. <laughs> the whole show. that is awesome uh membership put out of the way though so we can we can move on to bless you we can move on to uh to something um more not relevant than than shadow puppets which was not on the run i'm looking at here is there was nothing <laughs> not, not sure how no, did I nothing on it never has been as a matter of no. fact um I, so i don't know why when i go through and look for stories or funny news and things that happen and we know we see them or encounter them throughout the week right we're like oh gosh that should be in the podcast so we text each other a quick link of hey and half the time it gets on there half the time we forget because we've gone on with conversation um but the stinking lottery as of late always finds a way to to just pop up and again there's more than one story but i'm not going to bore everyone with it because I, I feel like it's getting old but this one is another cool one and it's always it's always in the 
north and northeast and all that but uh a guy named steven uh he's in massachusetts his dad uh gifted his son let's see if i see how old it is uh larry scratch off ticket father anyways it was a ten dollar ticket he gave it to his son it's an adult son it's not like 16 18 20 it's the son is in his late 30s early 40s and uh he scratches it off like, oh, thanks, Dad. You know, funny games. And I know people do that, and offices do that for Christmas cards or other holiday cards. You know, they throw scratch-offs in there, right? Mm. So he did awesome. Scratched it off. Four million dollar winner. Four See, million. I, just, do you have do you have a regret if you give somebody a gift? I I realize this is yes, this is a, just a step above giving someone cash. Okay, cash is means I I I forgot. I forgot about your birthday, so here's some money. Please forgive me. Right? That's that's what cash is. A step above that is I remembered your birthday soon enough that on the way here I stopped to the gas station and bought you this lottery ticket. When I grab a bottle of booze, yes. I got a yes. I got a ticket for you. <laughs> and, but you get the benefit of of being able to say, yeah, it cost me five bucks, but it could be four million, right? So really, I I love you this much. You know, it could be four million. If if this is four million, I would have given it to you. But then once they actually get the four million, you're like, buddy, man, it was it was it was my five, right? Can remember you, that you gift I like gave F? you? You remember that gift I gave you? <laughs> yeah. So I will. I can say this now, sadly, because no one and but well, no, my dad. He's he he'll laugh, but everyone else involved in this is past. So I had an uncle in my life who was amazing. And I don't mean this to be dark. It's just it's, the story is what it is. Uh, and it ties in. He was awesome. He was the athlete in the family. So he would come around. We would play football. We played golf. We did everything. Uh, an amazing uncle. Loved him to death. He was so great. I was really, really young. But he had a, a tendency to bail. Thanksgiving, yeah, I'm coming and coming. Morning of, can't come. I was so young, I didn't know why he was bailing. He just would no show. Birthdays, no show. Christmas, no show. It just, it happened all the time. When he was around, he was my best pal. I'll never forget uh, birthday. He showed up, but he forgot a gift. Well, he had a five gallon, like sparklets water bottle of coins that he kept. So last minute, he drugged that in and just gave that to me as a young little kid for my birthday. Five gallons. Yeah. That's huge. That's huge. And that's heavy. So Was it mixed coins or pennies or mixed coins. So I oh dumped it out and I proceeded to count it that day while like football was on. So grandpa was watching football with my uncle, everyone. So I'm just counting all this out. And I, I don't remember the number. I remember it just being huge. And it's a small fortune. Yes. And I remember um my mom being like, It's how much? And then he and he went, It's how much? And he went to my mom. So it was my mom's sister. Uh, her brother, he said, I got, I got to get that back. I can't. And she's like, Oh no, you've bailed too many times and you forgot his gifts and you give gift this is his, gift. you are, you're leaving this house before you're taking that with you. So I got to keep it from what I remember. Um, you made a down payment on the house. Yeah, it, it could have been. <laughs> the thing was so high. I remember, uh, it took me hours and hours of them watching. It wasn't baseball. They were watching golf, um, which is, you know, five hour event on TV. And I just sat there on the living room floor. Putting all the pennies and everything out. I, and counting I bet your fingers were like black afterwards because coins are dirty. You don't know it, but after you've held that many, it's like, the, oh, look at my The hands. carpet was too. I remember where the oh. carpet was because my mom was like, oh my gosh. And so we had to clean that up. But yeah, it was, it was incredibly heavy. But uh, I, I'll tell you, just just from my, I, I metal detect and obviously yes, I, 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 I cherry pick a little bit, right? Because I can tell if it's a quarter or a penny. Yeah. But penny rings up the same as a gold ring a lot of times or like i'm on my machine so both come up as a 21 on my machine and so okay. i dig a lot of pennies as well so i've turned in a you know those big you know sam's club size um nest quick yeah single serving um no, it's not single serving it's a lot more than that but Holy it's a nest quick mix <laughs> it's put down the mountain shirt. dew would you <laughs> single serving um yeah it's uh anyway i a full one of those are probably three quarters of the way full in the coin star was like 180 bucks and it's less than a gallon totally so five gallons you, you could be five 500 plus you know 500 to a thousand depends on on the mix of the coins it was over a thousand dollars yeah i remember that uh it was nuts because i was like 
so young. I remember a hundred dollar bill to me was like the winning a million bucks. So when I saw when I counted finally to a thousand dollars on my little notepad, I was like, Mom, 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 we're rich forever. Rich. <laughs> yeah, like we can live forever, you know. And she's like, We can't, but oh my gosh. I mean, it was freaked out. It was it was crazy. Um, but yeah, that, so that's a that's uh, really cool. Do they have a coin star in New York? I don't, I, I don't know when coin star came out. I only discovered them when I started metal detecting. I don't know at that age. I doubt it. Uh, I was literally like four feet tall, maybe at that, at that time <laughs> of my life. Um, but I use them all the time now because I have a little, um, little leather pouch that, um, I got when I was working at the golf course, it's meant to go in your golf bag and you put your, you take your watch off your wallet, your car keys, and you put it in there. It's called a valuable pouch. Mm. store all your valuables in it stuff in your golf bag so you don't lose it well i keep that in the center console of my car and that's what i fill up with change and it's i don't know it's like a large sandwich bag size so when it gets a little full i just go over to the coin star here and dump it in and it's always anywhere from uh 40 to 60 bucks depending on the makeup mm. of the coins so sweet it's coin star is cool i like it i used, I used to flip the pennies like the little I mean, well, I've, I've I never could get like that done. Two hundred dollars worth of pennies. <laughs> like you can zing them across the room and like. Oh put yeah, them, I can. I can, sm I can smack somebody with somebody enough force that it'll leave a welt. It's like, yeah. oh, I, I mean, I. That was like back in the day. I mean, I don't imagine pennies are probably the same as they were back in the day. But I haven't. I'm saying I don't do that now. I don't flip pennies at people because that's just rude. Well, I have to say, kids, <laughs> Island <laughs> Princess, first in chat. I forgot about that. So let me just interject that right there. In, in the middle of the penny talk, Island Princess. Um, I've never been able to do it. Oh. For those that don't know, Coinstar is a is a vending machine that uh, that you put money into and then don't get anything out. <laughs> I mean, it gets Pretty to your much. seat, right? You give away you like thirty percent or something. You can get it in different ways. You like you dump all the change in and it counts it and it makes this horrendous noise and it takes forever. And uh, like if you were dumping five gallons of coins, you'd be there for like three hours. That it's counting yes. because it's not that quick. Mm -hmm. um, and then it crunches everything and and then finally it spits out a little receipt. And you can either say, I would like it in a, like an Amazon gift card well to give you the full amount. Yep. Or you can say, give me the you owe me ticket and they take 20% or 11%. It depends on the store. And yep. you can take it over to customer service and they just like shell out. They're like, here you go. So it's like cashing the, out at the casino. I do the cash option at Walmart. I just, I take it in and I think they, they're at, 20 percent at our local walmart and i just say just give me the thing but i'm there all i'm there so much anyways i ask accounting i was like can i just give my accounting information to walmart so you just direct deposit my check there because <laughs> that's where we can get everything all the time but, uh coinstar pays out in bitcoin now so Ivan, cha-ching always the proponent of uh cryptocurrency ambassador yes <laughs> the, the flagship um but no, I mean, it's, I get it. You know what? If I'm not going to sit there and roll my coins and take it to a bank and I can just dump it in a portal and you count it for me, I'm going to give you 20% for giving me cash back because I did not take the time to, to roll my coins. So, But you know what? I, I wonder, and I know you keep taps on it, especially the coin guy on YouTube, how many valuable coins get thrown down that chute that people have no idea? Like they okay. just got $38 worth, but they had a $2,000 coin just go down the chute. <laughs> It's like a gold coin just accidentally just you know it says five dollars on it and it rings up as five dollars but uh, it's actually worth two thousand it's nope. the misprint you know from the mint type one that's a collectible i mean it's i, I know this i know this because because in the metal detecting community this is something that is you know it's on our minds right because these coins right. are in circulation sometimes people will accidentally grab a valuable coin and go and spend it the the machine is is programmed to reject fakes Right. Right. And so if it's not one of the standard coins, mean like a Susan B. Anthony dollar or, um, you know, even some of the old 50 cent or dollar coins, um, if it's not one of the standard coins with a, a weight that weighs in um, within the parameters of the modern coin. OK, so right. like the silver coin weighs a little bit different than the coin that the quarter that you weigh now. And so a lot of times the silver coins will be rejected, especially like mercury dimes, and things like that. So anytime you walk by the coin star. If there's coins that have been rejected that people just left because it's another hot tip, it spits out reject coins long after people leave. Okay, so oh, it's as it's okay. still, if it's still making noise, there's still change in there that might spit out. But if there's any money in there, there's a good chance that there's going to be some old coins, whether it's a wheat penny, whether it's a, a silver dime or something like that, and they can be worth some money. So. Interesting. I'm gonna keep uh, I'm gonna keep tabs on on that. Uh, that's 
All right. Learn, learn something new every day. Kelly P says, whether watch the after murder. I, that, so that's a joke because uh, I, I think it was, yes, it was this week and our last week and I was in Walmart and they cleaning supplies aisle. I took a picture of that and I posted on the recovery addict Facebook page. And I said, uh, I'm just going to leave this here for y'all to make your assumptions of what it was. In front of the Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it lit up with everyone going to every trial there's ever been of, Oh, you're so guilty. Which, of which is every trial. Every <laughs> which trial is every trial. It's got to come in in the Apple trial at some point. It's like, yeah, we got the beer at Walmart or something. But I'm willing to bet it doesn't come in. Really? Walmart will not come in the Apple River trial. It's been in every is single it, is trial. Is anyone going to take one. that bet? If anyone wants to take that bet, hit me up on Facebook and let's make a wager because now I'm, <laughs> I'm deep into the scratch off game and I just can't get out. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I'm willing to bet this is one we get a pass on. Man, crazy. So I'm, I'm thinking, what what was the ending with the four million dollar gift that the dad gave the son? Was that just like, and they all lived happily ever after? Uh, yeah. So were they still Chris, fighting it out in court <laughs> to see who gets the four million? Because <laughs> I think the latter is probably more likely <laughs> going to be in court. Uh, he called his wife first, and then he called his dad to share the news of the result. The winner said he plans to use some of the prize money to travel with his wife. He doesn't mention anything about <laughs> his gifting father. Or <laughs> yeah, he's out of the will already. He's like, look. <laughs> no mention of, it just says, I'm going to travel with my wife. Nothing to do with, I'm going to give some to my dad. I'm going to mm -hmm. hope my dad travels. I'm going to pay off his mortgage. No, just says my wife and I got to go travel. I'm going to blow this money. And I hope I get another scratch off next year from dad. <laughs> that's, that's all I said. <laughs> Man, four million. I, it's going to be gone. They'll end up in court. They'll fight over it. Yeah. Well, especially if people are already planning on what they're going to spend it on, what they do. So he's going to take the cash option, which is going to be 1.8 million cash. And yeah, it, it's going to be gone in two years. That's what happens to most. But uh, yeah, that's crazy. Bummer. Any any other good lottery news over the week? Um, there was more. I skipped it because I know last week I put like five stories on, but some something happened in Michigan. Someone else hit a big ticket uh, off a whim and off of a guess and something corny. And I just, I got, honestly, I just got depressed and I just had to click off because it, there was too many. Uh, it's because you were still thinking about your recent loss with your scratch off. My loss, but my win. Hit, hit too close to home. My loss, but my win. Yeah, we're, we're going to claim the win. <laughs> so. We're claiming the win. But there's two forms of lucky that we've come to realize. And this story, it's not brand new, but it's also not that old. So you can get lucky and win the, the lottery, but you can also get lucky and, um, I don't know, escape death. That was, I would a, take... that was a toss. That was, you're like, you're like I, if I knew what was coming up next, I would pick up that lead, that little segue and uh, respond appropriately, right? Yeah. <laughs> Where are we again? <laughs> okay, I remember. I remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was I was reading chat. I was reading chat because uh, I called I called the courthouse in Arizona <laughs> and 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 I asked uh, the talk to Superior Court this morning when they, the video wasn't there and someone was saying in <laughs> in chat that just nobody showed up. The pool photographer didn't show up today, oh. which is why we had no court day off um, they're just like well you know that it sucked yesterday i'm just not going today and and so i was reading that while you're doing the segue and i missed the fact that you know escaping death uh, was was my cue to say you know what speaking of that thomas i saw the most crazy thing over this last week tags there's, you're there's, it there's, there's a video <laughs> i need some more mountain dew maybe i don't know there's there's a video of uh of a gentleman, and I'm, I'm going to butcher this because I, I I watched the video before I read anything. It's it's one of those things where you just scroll and there's a quick little video, and you're like, wait, what's happening there? And it's over before you know it. So let me see what let me tell you what I saw. It's a video security camera looking down the sidewalk at a front door. A guy walks on the screen, opens the door, goes in the door, and the door is shutting behind him. And right as the door is about to close, across the parking lot comes a buzz saw, like a four foot tall buzz saw, just. Ding, ding, and you can tell it's spinning. It's still like picking up speed because it's throwing all sorts of like debris every time it hits the, the pavement and it like sticks right in the door, right next to the door that the dude just barely, barely walked through. Like two seconds. Do you think um, KGW8 on YouTube will strike you if you play their clip? 
<sighs> give it a try. Give it a try. I'll, right. I'll take a, I'll take a strike. All right, let's do it. I've got it. To, but uh, if I can, we'll we'll pause it and use commentary and call it fair use because it's news. There it is. Bam. Okay. All right. Fit road security okay. camera. Uh, no audio. Just so people know, I'm gonna fast forward to here. This guy looks like like an older Kurt Cobain. Does, so that, does he not? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like I recognize that guy. Oh, well, I'm gonna go. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna slow it down just a hair because they. I know the other videos played it pretty pretty quick. Yeah. So here we go. So watch the bottom of the screen. That's that's gonna be the dude walking in. Kurt Cobain pulls open the door. Now watch up the cars between the truck and the cars up there. The three vehicles and the two the other direction. Here comes the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. And that was slowed down. That was slowed down. Zing. Oh my goodness. I mean, that's just, I can't, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to slow it down one more, but I, I can you, to me, I will take that over a lottery any day. If that's what's, uh, if, that, <laughs> if that's what's in my row. I mean, this is crazy. Do, 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 do. Just going in to get a sweet vape. Time. Sweet time. Bars on the windows. So we're not sure where we are in the part of town. And then, yeah. Here comes. Ding, choo, ding, choo, ding, choo, ding, 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 Oh my gosh. I just, there's, I, there's more to this story, right? That saw blade started somewhere. <laughs> 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 there's somewhere there's a construction worker who's, who's cutting concrete going, it's just not getting any penetration. <laughs> you, know, these, you can't figure out where the blade went, <laughs> but oh my goodness. That he was, says, uh, I was walking in the store here. I put my hand on the door and I heard a loud bang and a bunch of yelling. And just as a cloud of smoke pops up, I see a guy fall into a ditch and a four foot blade hurling at me. <laughs> I mean, holy this is Eugene, Oregon. Was it, was it a concrete cutting blade? What are those? It big, had to be. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And there's a zoomed I, in picture. So it doesn't have uh, the big teeth like metal or wood. So, uh, but it, there's some cool interviews. It that, doesn't need teeth at that speed. No, fair. Um, so if anyone wants to, we won't show any more, but it's uh, KGW8 yeah. uh, out of Eugene, and there's some follow-up on it. They show the scar and the door jam right behind it. They show the blade, everything. They interview the gentleman, uh, as you saw, but uh, holy cow, talk about lucky. If I was the store owner, I'd be like, I'd like to keep the blade. We're just going to hang it on the wall and just be like, hey. 100%. Get your lottery tickets here. I mean, yeah. you know, is, if you, you can avoid death and win the lottery, right? Right in one store. Hundred percent. Oh my goodness! Oh, but, it, that guy was lucky. Not, not not everyone was that lucky. Not everyone's not. Oh, got it. So first try. Yeah. First try. <laughs> Paid attention. Not everyone's not that lucky of hitting projected. So it, this is sad and very serious. But there's some comedy depending on the comments you read um one of which i i read and it said see another reason not to exercise <laughs> and for those of you that haven't seen it the comment was directed at um and, and i forget where it was um i actually saw it a few days back and i had to try to remember it to put it in um let me see if i can find the location real fast uh, quick scroll not find it anyways uh this couple oh delaware uh, they go out on a little trail walk, a little exercise. And, you know, most people are afraid of flying. Like, I don't want to fly. Yeah. I'll get in a wreck. And then everyone says you're most likely to get in a wreck on the way to the airport than actually on the plane. Well, this couple goes to exercise out there for a stroll. And then uh, they get hit by a plane walking. And so it's sad because they're in critical condition, but they're uh, they're supposed to survive, which is fantastic. But how do you go for a stroll and get struck? Now, I will say uh, the NTSA, I think it is, or whatever it is, uh, they're looking into it. They're not 100% confirmed that it got struck directly by the plane or the debris of the plane, but it was that close to where you got hit by plane debris. That That's what is the luck of getting hit? It's got to be debris. But it's got to be. Because even, even a little Cessna, a little, little two-seater, um, unless it like falls like straight down out of the sky, it has to be flying about a hundred miles an hour just to get off the ground. So that thing's moving. Even if it's coming down, it's, it's still 75 mile an hour plus on impact. Uh, Cause you know, any slower than that, it just drops, but ooh, man, what, what so, are the odds? Truth <laughs> be told, 
rotation speed on a Cessna of that size. It's actually what we would call 55 knots, which is about 64 miles an hour. Rotation speed is what you call when you're when you lift going down up the runway. Up. Yeah, when you hit rotation. rotation speed, that's when you go. So 64 yeah. miles an hour to take off and go. So the article I had read, I think they missed their initial landing. So they circled back around. And when they, did, they missed their second one as well. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no chance at a third. I'm not, I'm not the expert. I'm not going to no. make that call. So they hit the tree line, uh, and uh, yeah, the debris and or the pl- I'm with you. It had to be debris because if any sort of that plane moving at that speed made it through the trees and actually struck them, they'd be toast. Yeah. Um, so a uh, quick comment here, whether uh, coffee, I don't drink coffee, but um, I will gladly let you pay for that's extra yes. coffee and hang out. That's, that's <laughs> <a yes. laughs> Matthew, I'm jealous. You guys have some fun. Count me in, Matthew. I mean, um, it's awesome. that's, that is, that's absolutely crazy because you think of the odds, the odds of being struck by a plane are probably much lower than the odds of being struck by lightning. Have yeah. to be, have to be, which is, I mean, in my mind, when I, when I think of all the bad things that can happen to you, car crash is pretty high on the list, right? Cause it happens yep. to a lot of people very often. Um, and then you've got some of these other things like, um, die from a bee sting eaten by a shark struck by lightning and hit by a plane those those are probably in that order (laughs) (laughs) they're all the next i'm not sure what uh wrong answers only what what would be above and below on the risk of probability um ways to go you know ways to uh, you know this is like uh what's it called final destination (laughs) i was gonna say final destination it's uh you know what's funny when i got my motorcycle license and i started riding a whole lot more um, I mean, when I start, when I got it, I actually started writing, not more, just writing in general. Uh, uh, you, you already admitted to writing yeah. your license. <laughs> it's, it's out there. You, uh, your brain goes when you're on a motorcycle straight to that movie and you see a million final destination scenes in front of you. And for those of you that don't know, if you love scary, creepy movies, final destination is a weird one. It's, uh, it's a series of events that are all happenstance that, uh, eliminate people that are part of the story it's it's really wild um and i think there's a couple of them out there i think right (laughs) why would they be i don't never mind Um, i don't why okay uh no words for adam i know the text that came before this (laughs) you're in big trouble (laughs) okay i I know the the uh you're in trouble we're giving um, out 10 free timeouts tonight for <laughs> uh to your to answer your question though thomas uh there are five. five. Oh wow I'm I, way behind. i've not watched any of them they, they scare me to death i mean no no pun intended they hmm. i just i would not sleep some of these trials keep me up at night just like it's, that. it's uh just, it's, it's <laughs> well the, I, the trials are real life i know it's fake you can I didn't know there's five. I've seen two. My brain can't tell the difference. <laughs> it looks real on the screen. You might lay off the Mountain Dew. <laughs> Are there any other options? This is the one. So this, yes, still can't drive behind a load of tree trunks because of that movie. So there's people, uh, I followed some bikers on YouTube and all that, and they will come up on logging trucks and they will post videos or a quick snippet. And they'll just say, if you know, you know. And then it shows them going <laughs> around them at 100 miles an hour. Like, you can pay me a million bucks to ride behind one of these things. Not happening. I, I watched. I saw. I came up on an accident one time. A semi truck that had one of those huge long pipes. Like a, a big, huge culvert pipe. But it was like the size of the, the truck. Yeah. And it was huge long. And it was going around a curve. It was actually going from uh, 215 to I-15 northbound. If you, if you know where that is, um, that's in Utah, um, North Salt Lake area. Um, it was going around that entrance and the, whatever the straps broke and it came off. Now, not luckily there's just like a big ditch in a field and it just rolled and didn't hit any houses. But I'm like, if that, if that was going around a corner at any one of the other curves that that road has <laughs> before then, it would have just steamrolled cars. It would have been, there was nothing left because this was a massive, massive pipe. That's but, crazy. Uh, I guess it happens in real life. And the, I mean, anyone who's been around logging trucks and seen logging accidents. Yeah. It's a real thing. They that's are. Why I don't, that's why I don't drive. I work from home. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a motorcycle for sale if anyone's uh, in the market. <laughs> now I'm freaked out. But but the odds, though, are very low. It's not like, you know, the coin toss, you know, that it could happen either way. Definitely not 50 50 or anything like no. that. Or 51 49. Or anything like why do, that. Why do you say fifty-one forty-nine? Wouldn't it just be fifty-fifty? 
some people think it is, but it's so funny. I was not looking for this when it came about. I'm a believer in this. When when I saw this research, research shows a fair coin flipped over and over and over. Odds are not 50-50 for heads or tails, whatever you want to call it. A, a fair, meaning a fair coin would be like a common currency, quarter, penny. Yep. After, is, is that uh, because they can land on their side? I mean, technically, I'm a, you're, this is like a mathematical mathematical probability that never happens, right? You flip the coin and it lands on its side. You're like, oh, must have at least a, a slight percentage there that det detracts from heads or tails. So I think they did it. They did it flipping in the hand. It was all flipping of the hand and catching and flipping. So I was told this years ago. If you flip a coin or someone else's, look to see what's facing up, what's heads or tails. Whatever's facing up, call that. You have better chance of it planning on that i have had great luck with that studies show fair coins tend to land on the same side they started evidence from 350,757 flips but the kicker is as much I, as that's a lot that's a lot of flips that's like uh, that's like doctorate level research to do that many <laughs> the, the dedication involved my thumb would be like swollen and sprained if i'm <laughs> flipping that many times do they use a robot <laughs> like you've got a coin flipping robot because that would throw it off as well you've got to think about the uh the variabilities of the flipper it brought me back to the murdoch trial of the cell phone guy in the hotel room just chucking a cell phone around the room <laughs> i'm just picturing the research guy in a motel six two hundred there's, there's an expert out there like, uh, <laughs> i'm actually uh i've been uh, <clears throat> I've been uh, sworn in, accepted as a, a legal uh, expert in about 750 trials about coin flipping. Coin flipping. <laughs> I'm, I'm the only one in my field. <laughs> I've got published works. No peer review because no one else does this. No one else. So, so here's, you choose, ready for the actual odds? Yeah, let's hear it. So if it's heads is facing up, choose heads because you have a 50.8% chance it's going to land on heads. Honestly, the, the point eight surprises me. I would I would think it would be like fifty point zero 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 one or something that you know almost insignificant. But point eight is that's sizable. I mean that you can round that up to a one, right? One hundred percent. It's like fifty one forty nine. Laws of math. Is this is this one of those things like the math game where where they say you've got three doors and the prize is behind one and you choose one and then you, and the person says I can tell you that it's not behind this other one. Would you like to switch? And if you say yes, you have like a thirty three percent higher chance of winning you know that one yeah because it's 33.333 for all three doors equivalent and then if they say it's not that one it's one of these two now you're now you're at 50 50 versus but 33, yeah, it, 33, by 30. switching by switching you have higher chance instead of staying to your original door i don't know. stay tuned for next week's podcast so we'll have gonna, on the, uh, how many how many times <laughs> do i have to do this before we can <laughs> three thousand three hundred and fifty thousand did you do the coin tosses yeah just over. It's uh, 350,757 flips. And it was published online. I don't know. We need some more Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to stay up and do a live stream of coin flips. Oh, this was done by Cornell University. So there's, Was this there's like taxpayer funded? Same side outcome to be they rounded up for us, 51%. So there you go. If you're in the dire straits, make sure you just pick what was already up go with that. so now i'm i'm curious because you, you've worked in sports you played you know semi-professional hockey mm -hmm. um a lot of sports start with a coin toss right the middle of the field everyone comes out the captains meet they they say hey you know we've got this commemorative coin we're gonna flip to see who what end you go who starts first everything it's not just to choose flip your coin you you should really look and see which side he's starting with up but right they say fair coins. So are commemorative coins, different weights and materials and metallics. They don't fall into the study. Maybe they defy the odds. I don't know. If anyone in the NFL is out there watching and you guys give this a go next season, just give us a little shout out. Let us know how it goes. NFL, um, uh, European football as well, I think, right? Don't they do a coin toss at the beginning? I don't know. I don't they just they just agree. It's like, sure, I'll, <laughs> I'll take that in. You guys can have the others. It's fine. <laughs> it doesn't matter the outcome unless it's overtime. So does let's hockey just get do the a, game started. Does hockey do a coin toss? It's it's indoors. They do it's, face it's off. The one. They do like rugby. It's like they just they drop the puck and the oh, right, right, right. they just fight it out. Like yeah, like physically. 
Like a real sport. Yeah. They don't use coins and stuff. They, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All the football players out there. Uh, the yeah, the no. ones that use the coin are the ones usually where they're outdoor and, and that you might have an advantage because of the sun or whatever else. They put a Wind. measure of. Yeah. Okay. That More makes like sense. baseball. With you. Baseball, you just go with home and away. There's no coin yeah. flip of who wants to pitch for. Anyways, I digress. We could go on for days and I'll get beat up in comments. So I'm going to stop. Um, <laughs> But, uh, speaking of sports, I think I think Rob's in in chat, and uh, he's got a team that he's really happy about. Something about the Wolfpack. Is that, does Wolfpack mean anything to anybody? In North Carolina. Anything? Oh, we got Roy's here too. <laughs> <laughs> Roy's here. I uh, for Rob. <laughs> I don't. I don't have. <laughs> uh, apparently, uh, I think I think it's NC State that's still in the. Their bracket. I mean, they're they're still in the like the elite eight going into the final four. Is that where we're at? I don't know. I haven't followed tennis in a long time. Mel Poy says sports ball. Nope. <laughs> 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 but uh, I'm excited because you know I'm from North Carolina, so I'm I'm glad that somebody's there representing. That's really cool. Oh, now you care about the. Never mind. March well, Madness. I'm going to claim it. I'm going <laughs> to yeah. claim it if they're it's I'm like, hey, <laughs> I'm I claim to be a North Carolinian, even though I'm a transplant. I moved here, and it's like, hey, this is home now. And so. If you don't, if they do great, it would have, if either of the two North Carolina states would have been great or North Carolina teams would have done well, I would have been like, Hey, that's my team. But, yeah, that's, <laughs> fair. that's fair. Uh, quick question. Roy, he's in chat. He says the yes. film 21 explains this Roy, since we've been uh, just babbling over here, is that in regard to the, uh, the coin toss and flipping? I'm curious if that's what your comment was for. Uh, 21. Is that the card counting video where people went to Vegas and, Oh, if that's the case, that was a great movie. I need to go back and watch it. I am hooked. If if they could if they could make like a hundred more movies about you know like it, everything from Catch Me If You Can. No, not that's not. I like the Catch Me If You Can too. But the yeah. uh, the the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, whatever that you remember what show that what that show that is. No, but I feel like Leonardo DiCaprio is in every single one of them. For no, I, I don't think it's him. <laughs> I, I love I love movies about Vegas. I used to work there. Um, not like on the Strip, you know. I, that's where I got some of my dance moves. I admit. You just did entertainment <laughs> there. You entertained yes, customers it. in Vegas. <laughs> I did entertainment in Vegas. You might reword that too. <laughs> I I will tell you in Vegas, all I did was I paid I paid the bills. I I take people out to to eat and just paid the tab. That's that was my whole job. It was just make them happy, uh, feed their crew, spend a thousand dollars hiring you know with a, a couple roofers uh getting the best steak they've ever had in their life and then in turn they'll order for my company that was my job and it was a tough job but i had to do it but i used to work there and i'm fascinated by the whole idea that's why every time you bring up lottery stories i'm like wow this is interesting i like i like the odds i like the psychology behind um why people gamble and what they're thinking I, my wife and i we've actually been to las vegas we went down there and we'd like walk through the casino and just like look at people <laughs> not like creepy like but it's like this is so interesting to watch people um, in making these decisions, poor as I, they might be, alcohol so, might be a factor as well. On that one. So I actually have a, a story since it's a not relevant podcast, and mm -hmm. I I have to think of how I can explain this uh, to keep us still within the realms of the family friendly show. I was in it's, Vegas. It's almost nine o'clock. You're you're probably safe right here. Perfect. The so, kids are in bed. <laughs> So I was in Vegas with um, my boss and a colleague uh, at an expo. Vegas is like the hub of expos. I mean, whether you want to go to Vegas for entertainment or not, but you talk about business, they're going to do it. They're going to put on shows and they've got it. And so, of course, we go out to dinner and uh, we have a few drinks. We're at we're in the Bellagio and there's this bar where you can eat and have drinks, but you're not inside the main restaurant. So you're kind of in the foyer area of the Bellagio. And uh, my boss, he he spots who he thinks is a um, a working gal, if you will. And uh, I was a lot younger. So. One of the waitresses. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was going to make you say it, but no, I <laughs> understand where you're going with this. <laughs> Um, and I was much younger. This was one of my first uh, real jobs um, done with hockey and whatnot, and getting out there. So. Um, I was I wasn't sold on his opinion of this approaching working gal because I pictured what was in the movies and or what you even see in on the show Cops and this that, and that. This was a very very well put together uh, young lady. So he says, "Hey, ma'am, 
Lee, come here for a second. And he asked if she happens to be working. And she says, well, yes, sir, I am. And he said, can I pay you your hourly wage and buy you a meal if we can ask you questions about your business? And my boss, he was a self-made millionaire at the time. He was an entrepreneur from a young age. He grew up in a um, and very – he grew up kind of a poverty-type situation, and he got into cell phones and accessories and then started selling service and all that. Uh, he became part of U.S. Cellular. Those in the Midwest, especially like I think Chicago is where they're based out. I'm familiar with that. Big, big company. Yeah. And uh, so he – legitimately, she sat there at a chair with us. And he asked questions. Uh, yeah, no, not a love story at all. No, 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 not one bit. Um, he asked very business-minded questions to this young lady of how she operates, how her group and colleagues and others and what they do and we're, what they do. We're don't talking do. advertising, uh, pricing. Advertising to pricing to the service. Even went down that route. Clientele, wow. Well, okay. So we can't and, go uh, there. <laughs> we won't go there. I will say, I will touch on a part of that. Um, she got paid a lot of money from a very lonely individual who actually wanted just company. That was it. Just company. Really? Actually just wanted the company and a dinner Somebody date to talk to. and someone to talk to and was one of her higher paying customers. And, um, it was wild. And she even went down, uh, discussing the, the, the sign language that they have among other workers in the high-end casinos because they make a lot of money and they are dressed very, very nice. They're very well kept. They're very clean. They, it's not... They have what, like a it's not like in the language movies. to communicate. It's like, it's hey, like, there's, your, there's your mark. This is your guy. This, this is. Yeah, it's like Pretty Woman at the end of the movie, but if she were still working, that's how they conduct yeah. themselves. around. It was, it was the wildest thing in the learning experience I took from listening to my boss do this quick interview um, and the trust she had when he said, Hey, I'm going to pay your hourly wage and I'm going to buy your meal and whatever drinks you want. I just want to ask you questions about what you do and what it is. And she said, fantastic. And when she was done, she said, this is one of the coolest experiences I've ever had out of what I do. Thank you yeah. so much for this. I appreciate it. And my boss had no ulterior motive. He said, thank yeah. you for your time because as an entrepreneur myself, I'm curious about your industry. So, you know, best of luck and off you go. It was really, really wild to hear and understand. It is a business of what they do and how they do things. And, um, and it's legal. I mean, in in Nevada, there's there's like it's little, there's they give out business licenses. Yes, you, you register with the state. There's inspections. There's it's it's a thing. So it's interesting. Yeah. So oh, uh, Virginia. Yes. Uh, she, I wish I remembered the name that she said they use for themselves and they're in an upper class of their profession. And so she given it, I forget what it was, but yes, 100%. He paid her hourly wage and bought her dinner to sit with us so he could ask questions 100%. And it, and he was very sincere. Um, and I believe she was too. And in, in the information she shared, it was, it was an incredible experience. Obviously I'm talking about it probably how old am I now? This had to be 20, no, not 20 years ago. I don't know. Had to be 15 plus years ago or more. And I will never forget it. I remember what she was wearing. I remember the three of us sitting there when she walked up. I mean, I'll never forget it. It was that impactful of learning about it and something I never imagined I'd be sitting in the middle of and it happened, but it was yeah. wild. Yeah. People watching, that's taking it to the next level, actually talking to them instead of just speculating and being like, I wonder what they're thinking. But, uh, well, being able to pick the brain of somebody who's in a lifestyle that that maybe is very much different than your own, and understand that uh, part of me admires that, okay? Because yeah. the ability to to stop and see somebody who who maybe if uh, you know might be making you know decisions that I would never go down, right? I'm like I'm never that's that's not the path that I would follow, or or I, I either I don't approve or I have my own you know feelings about that. But being able to stop and look at somebody. And, and talk to them long enough to understand their position and their viewpoint. That's a gift. That's cool. We need more of that in the world. Totally. I, I, that, I think I gained more respect for my boss in that very moment than ever before because he was able to just – someone I, – I already missed in chat, but it says something about uh, you know human-to-human -human moments or conversations yeah. are okay. But it was, it was great. It was wholesome. And she was cool. – extremely intelligent too. I mean, again, like I said, I go back to, I was uh, younger. I didn't have a lot of real world experience at this time in my life. And I remember hearing her discuss or mention things that I didn't even understand what she was saying when it came to business type mentality. Uh, so, but I don't know how we got there. 
but we did. But I'm glad I got to share it because yeah, it's, thank you. It's, it's, it's not really relevant, cool. but we talked about it because that's what <laughs> we do here. Uh, before we get off the, I guess the Las Vegas number. Um, I'm supposed to pick a Powerball number for I wasn't born with thorns. What, what's the range? I don't know. Is it between one and five, one and ten, one and hundred? Double what's digits. It? One or zero or oh, zero to ninety nine. I think it's zero to ninety nine. But oh man, I don't want to be wrong. If it, I wasn't born with thorns, now's a good time to probably talk about our agreement before you make <laughs> if, if you were to use my powerball number and say i don't know let's arbitrary number four million dollars <laughs> so you were in four million dollars what's uh what's our agreement what's our understanding um i'm gonna go with uh i'm gonna go with 15 is that okay 15 that's a good one i'm taking i wasn't bored of thorns um if you're handing out cash for winning numbers i'm going with 35. in fact i'm gonna write this down on my little notepad because i'm gonna check tomorrow thomas do one better and head down to the store real quick and uh, finalize i don't have choice. a problem <laughs> <laughs> and save it in the drawer with the other with the other tickets so you don't yeah. god that was so silly um, oh man that's great that is but really I cool. the next one um so speaking about going down yeah, memory lane okay. no i <laughs> this is going to be a theme i, I had it. a gambling transition you go to memory lane that's that's good let's do that one <laughs> memory lane so we often do as those you know we do our top three or not top or quick fire anything like that i wanted to throw in a little bit i don't know why i was watching your show this morning don't ask me where it came from but it it hit me i thought about something i remembered in my youth that i haven't seen in years so i wanted to just take a second and go down memory lane and what are a few things whether they're restaurants stores a service, a brand name, a tradition, a favorite food. It could be anything in the world that you distinctly remember when you're young. That if you fast forward to current day, you go, I haven't seen, tasted, been a part of, noticed that mm. since I was a kid. And I'll, I'll jump in and start. I don't know why this memory came up. I don't know what I was watching in the stream when it happened. But AM, PM gas stations. So I grew up in a tiny town outside of San Diego. It's cowboy country, uh, mm -hmm. population like 4,000. Um, granted, we're 30 minutes from San Diego itself with millions, but we stayed in our little bubble. On a corner, we had an AM, PM gas station. And uh, gas was crazy cheap. I remember it. I remember as a tiny little baby seeing it in our bread truck looking suburban, 86 cents a gallon. But we filled up at that AM, PM all the time i can't remember seeing an am pm gas station outside of that memory it's me being tiny did they, did they get bought out they had to I think that it's like a 7-eleven or something just like gobbled them up and just renamed everything just and then closed in. every 7-eleven doesn't have gas stations like all the ones that were just convenience stores i think it was around that time maybe it could, maybe... could be you, but no, you no zero it says i love am pm i haven't you, i haven't seen one you tell me that whether while, while you're telling that, I had the weirdest thought. And I, this wasn't where you're going, and everyone's going to think this is disgusting. But something I've not had since I was a kid: um, spoonfuls of butter. <laughs> I, I used to eat it out of the tub, you, I, I, and not not even not even butter. It was margarine. I cannot tell you the the margarine. Margarine and Miracle Whip. What's going on here? Can you do anything real? <laughs> I don't, when I was a kid, I, I can tell you it was not it was not the taste that I liked. I didn't even like the taste. Well, that's apparent because it's margarine. The, tex <laughs> <laughs> the texture, and I take the spoon, and you like when you open up the tub of the I, I don't know what it was. I can't believe it's not butter or you know it, I think it was Blue Bonnet, Blue Bonnet buttery spread or something. You open up the top and it's a little yellow little dish and you open up the top and it's got this nice little curly cue that's like it, it's I don't know how to describe it unless you've opened up the top of a, a thing of butter like a country crock or something they I think okay. they like spin it well they spin the jar while they squirt the okay the thing that solidifies into butter like substance okay yes. so th that design on top getting the spoon and scooping out the little curly cue in the middle well it's cold and sort of firm and then sticking in your mouth and then like squishing it against the roof of your mouth and then you, you spend a long time getting the butter out of your mouth but that for some reason 
that was like that was like the coolest thing. My, my mom, I think, hated it because I was a spoon of the butter. Your mom? What about your arteries? How do you think your arteries felt about? I was it? a kid. You can do it just about anything as a kid, and your body's like, it's okay. I can, I can take that one. We'll, we'll roll with that and get better. So, okay, I'm no better. When I I can't eat ar- I can't eat margarine at all now. Like I I don't want to eat a cookie if it was cooked with margarine instead of butter. Perfect. Take a couple scoops of Miracle Whip tomorrow, and then you'll be off that rug too. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so I'm no better. Come summertime, the um, co- the <laughs> the cookie dough fundraisers from school, we would always get a couple extras in the freezer. Mm-hmm. And it was when I was old enough to stay home alone in the summertime. My parents would go to work. I would get up in the morning. I would turn on Bob Barker and The Price is Right, and I would go get the gallon tub of cookie dough out of the freezer chocolate chip cookie dough and i would just sit there and spoon feed cookie dough all morning long which i chat i'll let you vote is that better than margarine or it was like wednesday to me when it was (laughs) cookie dough ice cream (laughs) (laughs) oh it was cookie two-step okay so he'll appreciate it but the cookie dough was so good holy cow ian do you see what ian said here Oh, yeah, oh. sorry. We both clicked at the same time. I used to eat raw beef. I still do. <laughs> but I used to, too. So there's a name for that, mm. and someone's going to put it in chat, because I have as well. Um, I did My first time was on a cruise, and my second time was at a restaurant, and it's, it's on the tip of my tongue. There's a name for it. It's a, it's a delicacy, and it's actually prepared properly to where you won't get sick, and it's so good. Now, it's, Ian, it's a really what cut? kind of are you talking about? <laughs> because it could be. <laughs> there it is uh yes steak tartare exactly okay. but ian might be saying he just snuck into the kitchen and grabbed a steak out and cut a chunk <laughs> off and ate it that's a different a little bit of rump roast on, 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 on. <laughs> just that's you hey, that speaking from experience that's why the canadians are so built tough and good hockey players because that's what they do <laughs> between that and surviving through the winter i mean the, the guys are <laughs> they're amazing yeah. um I'll, I'll take it to something that's uh that I it probably exists, but I've just never seen it. But as a kid, I lifesavers were not mints. Lifesavers oh were, were fruit. They were they were the fruit color, right? The the clear. You had the oranges, the yellows, and they were like you'd bite them, and they would turn into little razor blades in the mouth. You'd, they'd cut you because they'd shatter into like a million fragments that are just like it's like chewing on glass. And maybe that's why they did away with it. But where did the fruit flavored lifesavers go? Now it's all this powdered pushed together with some flavoring. They still have them. And I know this because you bring it up. That was my mom's favorite candy her whole life. And I'll never forget um, when we would go to church, we'd sit down and she'd be like, to my, my brother and I, do you guys want a lifesaver? And she'd open the thing and we'd put it on her hand and she'd pop it. And then if a red one came, she'd go. Oh, that one's and then mine. she would go, <laughs> yeah, 100%. And then she'd give us she wasn't stuff. being kind. She just didn't like the other flavors. And she's like, I feel bad throwing them away. I might as well give them to the kids. <laughs> There's a roadblock in front of the cherry. I need to give these out of here. And then now I can get to my cherry. But we, it was a big thing. And she had them in her purse 24 7. You've got the paper wrapper with the aluminum, with the wax. They're a pain to start getting going once you get them going. But lifesavers are, they're amazing. And they still have them going. Melissa says, I used to get the specialty pack of them every single Christmas when I was talking. They used to be in a little book you could open. Uh-huh. It, it was like a little book, and you could see like the rolls on each side. I know that because I have one friend, and that's all he ever gave me for Christmas. Yeah. It's like every every year I could count on giving him uh, or getting from him a book of lifesavers. didn't matter what I gave him. I could give him a remote control car. Even turn, here is your lifesavers. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, that's, that's cool. And all. So the last time I gave him a gift, I gave him a box of uh, cordial cherry chocolate things. And he never gave me another gift. I think I offended him. <laughs> I'm like, look, my whole life you've been giving me. It, we we live in the same state, by the way. Now We're, he's uh, he's like one of the big wigs at the company that makes Fortnite. Um, but uh, my, my whole life he was giving me candies, and as soon as I gave him candy back, he's like, "That's it, it's over." And I, we pretty much stopped talking at that point. <laughs> Not some, not the best I've, lifesaver. I've seen him one time since then, <laughs> and that was like three years ago. But that's too funny. Yeah, I know. I do see they make the because uh, the I, I believe it's cherry. The all red became a big favorite, so they make rolls of just straight red. And I see them in the Walmart stores all the time. Also, and I'll pick up a pack every once in a while just to have them. I kind of grew out of my sweet tooth um, 
So I, I rarely pick up the candy, but when I do, when it comes to stuff like that, when you have memories of like, okay, mom used to do it all the time and give us a junk one so she could eat them. But uh, speaking of sweet tooth, I feel like something's about to make a <laughs> shot. Me, me too. Me too. <laughs> I grew out of my sweet tooth too. I, I can't do sugar anymore. Can't do it any less either. But uh, <laughs> this is bottle number two for the day. I'm, I'm going to pay for it. That is so day. much. That is, oh my gosh. You're going to be up all night. You're going to fall asleep around the time no, I'm not to go I'm live. Not gonna fall <laughs> I'm going to be up all night flipping coins, trying to get them to land on their side and doing math and saying, oh, it's 51%. It should be a heads. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll throw one more thing out there as far as pastime yeah. childhood. And it wasn't even that long ago. And I know it kind of depends where you live. And, and um, yeah, I guess it really depends where you live. Because my mind just went to like New York City and all that. But uh, the town I'm in now, I moved here. Uh, and this is my recovery software. <laughs> Today I got this email from a company. who's like, hey, we'd like to sponsor your show. We've seen what you do. I think we're a great fit. Straight weight loss, straight health, straight like, you know, get your life turned around. You're in a downward spiral. Here we can help. They, the letter was written so nicely. Um, we need to save this guy. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. They have really watched my show. This was not a form letter. <laughs> They're like, you guys, we've, we've got our poster child. If we're ever going to make it big, okay, uh, this is the guy. We can, if, if our stuff really works, it'll happen right here. So. Have a problem? Consider us. <laughs> uh, that and the uh, the anti gambling number uh, has talked about the podcast as saying they want to sponsor you specifically. That was I'm not, not sure at you. me. That was not at me. That's just not a theme that we're starting. You're going to make it one, <laughs> and I'm going to have to keep it up if we're going that way. But I'm going with uh, again. It comes back to where you live. Where I moved to in 2004, which is the town I'm in now. I, I bounced in and out of town a couple times, but here I am. Um, we had taxis. No more. Ride sharing kind of took over that 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 gambit, I guess, a bit. I haven't seen a taxi in forever. And even between, I had a little stint for a few years. I was living down in the Dallas area, which, you know, big metro area. Um, never saw a taxi. But I remember as a kid, saw taxis all over the place. And again, I know it's where you live, right? I know they're still relevant in other cities I, I, there, is, but... I mean if you go to new york i'm pretty sure you can find a taxi right a yellow cab pretty much sure. but honestly just i'm you're mentioning that and i'm thinking nowadays i would probably trust an uber or lyft over a yellow cab and i'm trying to mathematically in my head i'm trying to figure out why that would be so because uber or lyft is basically just some guy with the phone who's like sure i'll give it a go i'll, I'll drive somebody around for money <laughs> it, well, you covered like a dang trial the medallion came. Got their, their you covered a day lift trial. <laughs> yeah, but oh man. But the meters were always rigged. They would say, and this and that. Whereas you can follow on the phone. You can be like, oh, it's going to cost me five dollars and eighty cents to go from here to here. And you click OK. That might be. Whereas you get in a cab, and the meter would just, and they take it a long way. There's no GPS. I think you're onto something because every time I've taken a cab, I've always thought I should be there by now. Right. With with the distance we've traveled, I should be there by now. And I'm yep. a little bit dizzier and not quite sure which way I'm facing. Um, and it's always in a city that I'm not really familiar with. So right. I'm not never sure. I can't be like, look, dude, I know you ripped me off. I know we've this is the second time we've been through this intersection. Okay. I I've never had that moment, but I, I just have this inherent distrust for cabs you know, for cab drivers. It's uh and it's crazy too. You know, there's there's a ton of documentaries too going back to cab drivers, the early ones that you know they came from uh, other countries to start a new life, and they landed in New York, and that's the job they took. And it's extremely dangerous because they got robbed um, by you know passengers and things like that. So they were when the cab industry really started, they're very hardworking individuals. And I'm actually not discrediting those that are still doing it. They still work hard, right? It's very dangerous. Um, it's just shifted with all this ride sharing and how everything's changed. Plus now you mix in e-bikes and stuff like that. The people are taking those versus riding and it's a whole big mix. I would, I would ride an e-bike over, over taking an Uber. For sure. Really? Yes. Is that, I, I, did your sponsor set you up for that or no. you just, <laughs> I, I remember driving around to, like when, when like bird scooters and, um, what's the other one? There's, there's some bikes, but the, like the scooter ones are there's just three of them. Lime up, or something. I think lime 
I think that was something like that. But there's the scooters and like overnight, suddenly the, the cities were just like littered with mm-hmm. these scooters and you'd find them like in, in the bushes and all over the place. Yeah. Never, never have I ever like swiped my card because I don't trust like actually paying money on some app that I don't know. I don't trust that, Fair. but I want to drive one. So I want to buy my own scooter and, and ride it. But I think I have to lose weight so I can be within the weight category of, of what the scooter says it can handle. Because <laughs> I wanted to be able to stop. I mean, I don't want to be like a guy loses life after, you know, first ride on an electric scooter because he couldn't stop in time. No, another another podcast story that we'd see. I have one. So uh, I use it for fun. I have a friend that lives a couple blocks away. So instead of walking. Yours is like a Honda and it has an 1100 cc engine. That's that's not the same. <laughs> no, the, those scooters don't count. I don't want to start those either. I have a, I have a legitimate electric scooter. Um, but the funniest part is I would scoot around, scoot around and use it. Um, there's a pond a couple blocks behind me. Sometimes on weekends I would take it to go down and I would pick up trash along the walkway or whatever. Well, my daughter loved it. So she would steal it from me and go use it. So I taught her how to ride on it. She's 14 now, so she's more than capable. So just this Christmas, I bought her her own. How'd that go? Has it ridden it once? <laughs> One time. So uh, so we have two scooters that don't get ridden. In fact, mine now has a flat tire. They're a pain to fix, so I ride the one I gave her when I do take it out. But our neighbor's kids, they're growing up getting older, so we let them kind of play with them I- and toy on but. They're awesome. They're a lot of fun. They have a purpose. I had almost the exact same experience with my kids and our riding lawnmower. When I first got it, it was the only thing they wanted to use. (laughs) They wanted to, (laughs) I want to mow the lawn. Can I mow the lawn? They they were mowing every day. They're out there. I think the grass is a little taller. Do you think I can cut it now? Now I cannot pay them to get near the thing. Like, no, there are bees out there. It's like you were fighting, literally fist fights. We had to separate you guys to see, you know, flip a coin to see who got to to mow the lawn. But maybe, that, maybe that's what happened with the scooter now that they have their own. It's like, nope, I want to. don't want it. Red Pen says she's almost car driving age, though. Scooters are for babies. She is. I've taken her out a couple times. I even posted, I think, on my YouTube page, a uh, quick short of it. But I just admitted to riding the scooter, and you're saying scooters are for babies. So I'm not sure how to take that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they serve a purpose, they're fun. Um, but no, I think it's just changing again. again so that's my. My last thing of uh, I haven't seen a cab in in years and years and years. I'll I'll do one more as well. Do you remember when Cracker Jacks had like real toys in the box? Little, yes, like something that, not not just something you could play with, but something you could choke on, like a, a legitimate toy, right? Instead of this, oh, it's a it's a it's a tattoo. You a lick tattoo. it, and stick it, or it, it's a little paper you flip and look. The guy does a jumpy jack. No, I they had. They had toys. I'm talking like quality toys, at least when I was a kid. That was like, this was a real toy. I'll add this to my collection. And never more. Never more. I'm not sure if the boxes got smaller because they seem smaller now than back in the day. I seem to remember it was almost like a cereal box. Okay. And you're like, you're like chewing on that stuff forever and the nuts and everything on the bottom when you get to the bottom. But the toy was obviously the best part. That leads me to a question. Yeah. For yourself or anyone in the chat. Did you ever hear this phrase from your parents? Driving in a car, there's some mild road rage. Where'd you get your license? A Cracker Jack box? <laughs> I may have used that one. But, okay, I was going to say, <laughs> my dad, uh, you, you say coined parents, that like, phrase. This was my generation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I, I, that thing but, is on repeat. When something happens, I want to say it, but I look over at my daughter, I'm like, I can't do it. I got to think of something more clever. Do you know why? You know why that phrase is real? Because back in the day, the things you got in the box were on par with the value of a driver's license. It was like, <laughs> this is something I will use. This is a useful a toy usually. But I mean, it was I mean, the decoder rings and everything you get. It was, it was like legitimate. It's like, you know, I'm I'm a cooler person now because I opened this box of Cracker Jacks. Yeah. I feel richer. I mean, my 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 net worth has increased. I love it. Chat's all agreeing. Yes, yes, yep, yep, yes, yes. I've said it. Yes, yes, yes. It's just they're blowing up. Oh, that's so awesome. I love it. Man, I'm, now I'm I'm thinking that's about the the shrinking, the the big shrinking that happened in. Uh, I don't know what year this started, but I I first detected it not in Cracker Jack, but I first detected it in Oreos. Um, when I was a kid, you would buy Oreos by the flat. 
right? You just it's, keep going back to your sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> My weight loss sponsor is like, hit us up, please. We can help. We can help. Uh, no, you'd buy, you'd buy the package of Oreos and you'd, you'd have to carry it with two arms, right? Because the thing was was big and it's just, you can't just like grab it by the side and the thing would support itself. It, it's not that the tray was any stronger because they were just as flimsy back then as they are now. It's that you had rows of Oreos. You had, you had all the Oreos the whole family could handle in one package. And that was like the family size. And there was a bigger one, like the industrial corporate party size or something. But the family size is what we'd get. And it was more than enough for, you know, me and my my nine siblings. But nowadays, you go to the store to get your your package of, of Oreos. And it looks like a scaled down Lunchable where you've just got a couple cookies in a row. And they lay them flat on their side to take up more space. And it's like, this is, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and they charge the same amount. <laughs> <laughs> the price goes up. <laughs> They're always, I mean, on a good, on a good day, I don't ask me why I know this. If you can get Oreos at $2 and 50 cents a package, that's a good deal. Two fifty. That That's like the sweet spot. I mean, the, it doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Rob, thank you very much. Uh, that's going to go straight to Oreos. I'm just saying. <laughs> I just, but, I, I just got a, a text from, uh, from Roy. Those of you that know who's been on the show, he says, uh, to the likes of <laughs> Scott, I should collaborate with said sponsor. So <laughs> I'm going to, I was telling Thomas about this. I'm, I'm not going to tell you the company name, but I'm going to reach out to him and say like, uh, what do you have in mind? Okay. I'm, I'm not concerned financially. I think you guys might be onto something. I need to take better care of my health, but, uh, I'll see what they have in mind, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dream of taking a sponsor unless it was something I believed in. So if you yeah, see you me it. like getting a little, losing a little weight around here, you know, one of the chins disappears or, you know, I start not being able to see me when I turn sideways, something like that. Then I'm be like, Hey, sponsorship is in the works. It's coming. Kind of, <laughs> 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 you got to try it before I hit it. Um, yeah. But you want to, you want to touch on the uh, fan funding real quick. We had a few that came through. Um, uh, yes. Of yes, yes. A couple yes. Oh my goodness. Holy cow, you guys are incredible. Uh, Rob, I'm starting from the bottom, working my way back up. Rob, thank you very much for the 10 gifted memberships. Super, super supportive of the show. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Uh, we've got uh, Mel Poy says, Mom said you were born in a barn. My reply, if it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. <laughs> Almost got beat. <laughs> I can see I can see you having to run after making that comment. Greeners, I also refuse to put my credit card into random apps. Uh, Ivan says, uh, great job today, R.A., uh, since warm weather oh send warm weather to weather watch catch me and ricky after the podcast That's uh good. crazy cat queen member for one month said i've had to reset my youtube account so i lost credit on my previous months of membership yeah. oh, well crazy cat queen i'm sorry uh we we know you're we know you're around here welcome um Gang of RA, like the sun god. Uh, Candace Hoff gifted a membership. Thank you, Candace. I think that's where we left off the other way. Candace Hoff, uh, also a member for seven months. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, Patches. So it's actually 11 months, but who's counting? Yep. Uh, Crazy Cat Queen gifted five memberships. Virginia Little gifted five memberships. <laughs> Aaron Patterson said, I'm almost a year old. Woohoo. Uh, Bill Blazy, awesome gifts tonight. Thank you very much. Congratulations on two months. Love that. Uh, let's see, Bug Dugger gifted five memberships. Uh, we managed to give away 10. That was awesome. Uh, hopefully you got one of those if you were expecting. If not, uh, Crazy Cat Queen gave another five. Uh, Red Pen gifted five. Red Pen gifted another five. And uh, Gaby May gifted a membership as well. So super just generous. Uh, thank you, crazy. all of you. It's just an amazing, amazing community. You guys are, are wonderful. I I love spending the entire day with you. And by that, I really mean the entire, the entire day. day. Uh, I want to say thank you to everyone in chat, not only for being here and watching us and tuning in. Uh, Rob, Ian, great to see you guys as well. But when you guys interact in uh, chat. Uncivil Ob was here as well, I think. Kurt was awesome. talked to Kurt, good in. to see you too. Uh, but when you guys interact, like such as the throwback, what have you seen in the day? What do you remember from your childhood? And you guys go off with your answers and your memories. It really makes it fun. Scott and I talk about it all the time. We love Thursday nights with the interaction with you guys and hearing what you guys have to say. So. Not just thanks for listening, but thanks for your interaction and your input. We really, truly have a lot of fun with you all. So can't thank you enough. Yeah. You guys, you guys are amazing. I, I can't use friends. You know, 56,000 of my closest friends. We get to hang out and it is wonderful. Uh, thanks for letting me join this community. Honestly, I, I kid you not. This has been the most amazing and rewarding um, career of my life. <laughs> and it's been short so far, but hopefully I have long ways to go, especially if I take care of my health. Right. So. I'll work on that as soon as I finish this Mountain Dew. I've got a little bit more. <laughs> so. Stay tuned. 
Uh, you guys are amazing. Uh, thanks for sticking with me. It's been a long day. Uh, we've got uh, more court in the morning. Apparently, I'll say this now, apparently the uh, pool photographer for the Arizona trial we were following just didn't show up today. And maybe it's because we gave him so much flack about zooming in on the attorney's notes or you know all the other inappropriate things that were happening. He's like, look, I'm not, just not going to take that anymore. But he's out, right? And I'm not sure if anyone's going to step in, which gives us a couple options. The entire trial is covered by Zoom and it's posted and we can watch it. Like tomorrow, we can watch today's events on Zoom. Um, but they don't upload it until the end of the day. So we can follow that still with that an option. I, I could download it all and save it until we, so we can catch up on the Apple River trial and then maybe go back to that one in case, you know, Franklin Tucker doesn't come through or you know, one of the other trials just doesn't happen on time. So that's, that's my current idea. We'll sort of put it on hold and, and wait, wait and see if, if the photog decides to come to work tomorrow. So, so bad Apple trial catch up in the morning, 845. Ish? Yes, high speed eight ish. I'm going to say eight ish. I'm oh. still going to be awake because oh. this Mountain Dew has <laughs> got me going. Caffeine, caffeine oh. free might win you off. I might, I might have to switch. But. Awesome. Those of you that, been good. Uh, still want some YouTube fix? Uh, I believe Ivan's going live after this. If you want to catch him, see what's going on. Scott, lots, enjoyed it so lots much. of good stuff out there. Thank you, thank you, appreciate it. You guys be uh, be good to each other. We'll see you in the morning. Thomas, have a good night. You too. See you tomorrow. All right, see you. Bye, Bye everybody. Thank you.